we do get asked from time to time about reports and about different ways you can get data out. These kind of queries tend to come in when somebody is looking for um, to send something to the supervisor or to a colleague to show some work that they've done. It's often the coding structure or it's the coding content or it's both. Now, without getting into anything complicated, you can easily send your coding structure. You can export your code book. You can do that very easily. Um, and that will put that out into Word and you can include or not the number of files and references and it will give you the structure of your codes, the names, the definitions, if you've put descriptors in and how many files and how many references are coded there. And it's a, it's a, it's a simple enough report to uh, create and to run. So I'm just going to remove those. I'll just show you what it looks like <clears throat> when you put it out there. It opens it up in Word. I've just chosen one of my folders, but I could do various cycles of coding, different coding folders. So I get my codes, the child codes are indented, the descriptors are there, and I can see how much data these various um, codes are drawing. So that works fine. It doesn't give you the content of the codes, but it gives you the coding structure. Now, if I want the content of the codes, then I can simply take a code and I can just do export. And I can export the code straight into Word. Um, <clears throat> In reference view, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I'll include the name, I'll include the description. I can include any annotations, any relationships that I've formed. See also links or memos. Um, I'm just going to open that on export. And it'll just show you, I get a, I get a Word report that I can send out as a PDF or a Word file. And it looks pretty much like it does inside the code. There's the name, there's who it is, it's Barbara. And there's the different comments and some of it's coming from audio and some of it's coming from text but where the text is there i can see it i can also see my annotations um, and they'll be displayed like end notes at the end so i can see uh, linked back with hyperlinks which annotations were there etc like comments in a regular word document so i can do that as well and that gives them both form and content but sometimes people want to do a little bit more than that they want to show the codes and the content and they may also want to apply filters I don't want to show every document or every code I want to show certain codes or certain documents and you can do that too but that's in an area down here known as reports so if I go down here you'll see there's an area called reports and there's formatted and text reports basically a formatted report is the one you're most likely to use it's already created for you it's already formatted so you can you can create your own and you can customize these um, and there's kind of standard out of the box ones here is that, that that run pretty well. Um, so I could see a coding summary by file. So here's Barbara and here's all her codes and here's what the actual text that was coded. Or I could look at a code and see what files are in there and what comments come from each file. So with these reports, when you're creating them, I'll show you in a minute how to create one. Um, you can create a file with you can apply filters. You you can decide when I run this report, ask me what I want to filter on. So I can say I don't want every file. I just want certain files. So I'm asking, I'm prompting it to prompt me to know what files to run the report on. So I don't have to just default to everything. So I'm just going to run it on Barbara and uh, just keep life. Well, I'll do it on two. I'll do it on Charles as well. Just keep life uh, simple and I can also tell it now I can filter by users and dates, but I'm more interested in the codes. I don't want every code. I just want to see those two transcripts and I want to see them in the attitudinal codes. Now, obviously I can select the whole folder. I can select everything if I want, but I just take positive and negative again, just to keep the example simple. And this is what I get. I get a report and it opens up in this report reader and you can see I've got report maps and thumbnails, so it looks a bit like a PDF, like they would be bookmarks on a PDF. So I can, I'm just going to switch off the thumbnails. Maybe that'll make life a bit easier. There's my report name and my date and the information that I want to see in the report. And on this little report map here, I can see there's Barbara and there's Charles, my two documents. And there's the codes for each of those. Again, not every code, but the ones I've chosen to include. It could be everything. 
So there's the negative comments from Barbara. And there's the positive comments from Barbara. So I'm seeing the code. I'm seeing that there's five references in the code from her. And I can see the actual comments as well. And you, you can have things like summaries at the end if I want to. I can put in the, the institutional logo, the name of the team. I can have um, dates and report names, etc., department names, whatever I want to include in here, I can include. And these are useful for if you're regularly sending out information. You know, if I'm if I'm going to be regularly sending out information to people, um, funders, PIs, supervisors, um, I can send out last week's coding, last month's coding, my coding, my colleagues' coding, you know, certain codes, one cycle of coding, but not the second one that we're still halfway through. So all that kind of, uh, it's very convenient. And finally, once I, I have these, I can just export that out into any of those formats that's a doc but i can put it out as an excel file an rtf or even on a html file if i wanted to share it on a you know via web browser so i'll just save it out there um on the desktop so you can see what it looks like so it puts it out now it looks pretty much exactly the same if i go out onto the desktop there's my coding summary in word so if i open that up Um, I should be able to see it and it's going to look pretty much the same as it did. I don't have the navigation view because I'm not inside in vivo anymore, but I have everything else. There's my positive and negative comments and I can see, you know, this kind of information at the start of each document, each code, the number of references, um, the, the number of references, the referencing number, who, who coded it and when it was modified. Now I may or may not want all that information. I can include it or exclude it in my report. So you can build these reports with a wizard. They're, they're reasonably straightforward to do. I probably should do a separate video for that because building one is not quite the same and customizing one isn't quite the same as running them. But this one would get you f what a lot of people want and what they ask us for. And there's, I, I just noticed today, like because I was asked this question today, that there's not a lot of stuff on the web in terms of videos about this. So I thought it'd be easier just to... Um, to put it out as a, as a how-to video. But also, we, we'll do another one then on creating these or customizing them if you wanted to make your own, but we might do that as a separate recording. Okay, I hope that's um, somewhat helpful.